I was just there to, to do my job. It wasn't that I felt you didn't want us there, but I didn't know where it was coming from. I took on the, the mindset of just, I'll just keep going. Might as well just keep going, I have a job. This episode is sponsored by BetterHelp Online Therapy. Visit betterhelp.com slash Padilla because sometimes existing is exhausting. And if you wanna watch a completely uncensored, extended cut of this interview, click the join button down below to become a member, just like all these amazing people. And you'll also help support this series. Anyway, back to Shane Top. Shane, Shane, Shane Top. Hello, Shane Top. Hello, Anthony Padilla. <laughs> it's, it's very weird to say our full names. I know. I don't think I've ever said your full name to you before. Uh, I think I've definitely said your full name. Oh, that uh, makes sense. I don't know if I've said it to you, yeah. But I've said it a lot over the past six years, obviously. I've only said Shane Top in reference to the uh, being the opposite of Shane Bottom. Yeah, as, as many of uh, <laughs> Smosh fans do as well. <laughs> so you're, you're not the only one. You've been with Smosh since 2015, right? 2015? Yeah, I think the summer of 2015. That's I crazy. can't remember the exact date. Yeah, it was, it was a summer. And the weirdest part about it is that because I left two years later, you have been with Smosh longer without me than you were with Smosh with yeah, by like triple the amount. Yeah, because it was two years with me and then, and then six, six years, years without. without. So many iterations that you've been through. You've been through the Defy era of Smosh, the what the f Defy shut down era, yeah. the we're lost and we have no home era, the mythical era mythical during the pandemic. Post pandemic mythical era. Yes. And now. The, the return of Anthony era. That Ian and Anthony own Smosh again era. Yeah. I gotta say, I think this is the best era. Do you remember wh like what it was that you were hired on I, for? Was I, it cast member? What did so it say? It was, it was talent. Talent. Was, was what the whole deal was. Yeah. And it was interesting because it was at a time where I was really struggling with my acting career. Yeah. And I wasn't certain if it was gonna last much longer, mm -hmm. if I was gonna be able to keep doing it. You were doing a bunch of mainstream acting, right? You uh, were... I was trying. <laughs> uh, I mean, uh, you know, You were on like iCarly and... Yeah, I, I, I had guest starred on a few Nickelodeon shows. I had been on So Random. I had done some indie films uh, and plenty of commercials. And you look at all that and you go, oh, I was working, but all of those were kind of like once a year. So I, you know, I moved out to LA officially when I was in 2007 and I booked like iCarly that year. And then the next year I booked like an indie film later that year. And the following year I booked like a commercial. So in the span of a year, the majority of it, I'm waiting around, I'm going to auditions, nothing's happening. By the time the audition for Smosh came, I hadn't worked in a couple years. So I went ahead with it and my, my representation was kind of like, what is this? We've never seen anything like this. We don't know anything about YouTube. So I kind of just had to take the risk and say, I'm, I'm gonna do this because otherwise my plan as of right now is to finish college and maybe continue on with that and maybe become like a therapist or something. I wasn't certain because when I moved out to LA as a teenager at 16, I was so delusional that I was, I was like, I'm gonna be a, a movie star by the time I'm 18. <laughs> But I wasn't the only years. one. I wasn't the only one who thought that. Every child actor, it, the the common phrase was like, yeah. "Well, my goal is to to make it before I'm 18." Right. Which that probably is, happened to like one or two people. It doesn't happen it. to hardly anyone. But it's so looking back, I'm like, how crazy of a phrase that is. Yeah. How, how crazy of a thought that is. That 18, you're you're hardly your life's hardly started. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking, oh man, I need to make it. I remember turning 18 and being like, damn, I haven't made it yet. Wow, I'm a failure. God, I, and really being like, I failed. Because in the beginning, you started kind of as the character guy, I'd sure. say. You know, you you started off with your Tom Cruise impression. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, which we organically <laughs> thought of. But, but I remember we did that, and then a Tom Cruise impersonator was like, hey, I did this six years ago, and we we're like, I didn't know that. I, uh, but but uh, so you started off doing a lot of these characters. Loki was like, I am so glad I don't have to do character impersonation. I suck at those. But you've always excelled at your character impersonations. So I think it's really cool that we get this dichotomy with you where you're hosting Reddit stories and Smosh Mouth as yourself, as mm -hmm. a host who is just being themselves and facilitating conversation. And then you'll go to Try Not To Laugh and do Dumpster Wizard and The Chosen. And tonight you're playing The Chosen. Yeah. Uh, full on Vampire Slayer Chosen. The uh, ultimate form of The Chosen. Uh, as you're roasting me, yeah. and, and you're so good at these impressions, I feel like we should look back at the first character. Actually, this was the first sketch that you were ever in on Smosh when was you it? played Tom Cruise. 
I'm gonna pull that out. Oh God. Hey guys, I am so jazzed to be part of this whole normal life thing. <laughs> Roommates and one ply toilet paper, <laughs> carpet and ferns. Holy <laughs> sh! I really love this couch. What are you doing? Love it. Love this couch. 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 Get couch. off the couch, Tom. Tom. Couch. Get off the. You can see me crack there for really? a second. I'm just <laughs> smiling. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you don't mind. I hate using toilet paper. <laughs> oh yeah! Look at the Tom Cruise spreading his ass. Yeah, moment. first shoot, and I get to do that with Ian. Pretty awesome. I, uh, oh, yeah. Man. I think that's the first time I've rewatched that. Really? In like a long time. I would like to bring back Tom Cruise for just a moment. Okay. I have... Uh, a sentence here that I think would be fun to hear Tom Cruise say. Okay, I might be a little rusty, but let me do here. it. <laughs> Sticking out your gat <laughs> for the Rizzler. <laughs> you're, sk you're so s skibbity. <laughs> you're so phantom tax right in the same <laughs> I just want to be your Sigma. <laughs> Freaking come here. Give me your Ohio. <laughs> Ready, Fazbear. <laughs> I don't think I'm I don't think I'm good with voices as much as I am good at kind of like the like picking up just on just kind of more the vibe of a of a person or a yeah. character. Yeah. Like um, earlier, you did an impression of uh, how you know when Ian's nervous, but he'll yeah. never say it. So Ian, whenever he's leading a meeting, yeah, uh, it's he yeah he, he gets like nervous burps, I think. Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> but he'll just kind of like he'll have the the clicker for like the thing, and he'll be like, uh, yeah, so um, uh, we're yeah we're doing that, and um, it's pretty good, and. Um, yeah, we're really, we're really excited. <laughs> the Ian face of like, sure. yeah. These are all the things that I noticed like growing up with him, but. I, 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 I like to think that when it was like, hey, do you want to sell Smosh for zero dollars? He was like, sure. <laughs> it is interesting that I, I remember doing that impression for my audition. I also did my Patrick Warburton impression. But uh, over time, what was interesting was like the the characters that kind of just organically appeared. And most of them, I didn't really plan that much. Mm -hmm. um, I know one that people love is uh, Courtney freaking Miller. We have our, our castmate, Courtney Miller, yes. sick one day. And they had a show called Seriously Stupid, Super Stupid Sleepover uh -huh. that she hosted. And so they're like, oh, Shane, can you hop in in her place? And I was like, oh, well, why don't I just be Courtney? Uh -huh. what, do we have like a, a blonde wig around here? And they're like, we have this like cheap, shitty rocker one. And I was like, sweet. <laughs> yeah. I put it on yeah. and it gets to me and I just go, I, I just go, and I'm Courtney Miller. <laughs> and then I was just so intense. And I just went with this insane like energy of like a wrestler, yeah. rocker. And I, I don't know, I lost my mind and people were like, who is this? And over time I kept, I just would occasionally just be like, hey, I'm just gonna put that wig on and just do that again. And it slowly built up this kind of lore of Courtney freaking Miller. Courtney freaking Miller. And uh, it became a completely separate thing. But I think the the Tom Cruise eyes are there when I do Courtney freaking Miller. Uh... It's a little bit of that, that this. I've loved these characters that have just kind of happened. And I, I do really care about them and I, I think I appreciate it more when people like the characters I do than when they just like me. Really? Like people will say like, oh, Shane's funny. I'm like, oh, cool, thanks. But when they like love The Chosen or they love Courtney freaking Miller, I'm like, mm. wow, that's cool. Why that's, do you think it is? I think it's because it's a creation. So that truly feels like a shared thing between mm. me and the viewer. Um, I am a private person, so I I am being genuinely myself and sharing parts of who I am when I'm on camera. But um, when I create something, I'm like, this is this is fully for not just for me to create, but when fans comment stuff about what they think maybe this character is or their yeah. backstory, it absolutely influences what I then think. And it's a it's an actual creation that continues to build, yeah, not just on my end, but 
but the but the fans. The audience the reaction helps shape absolutely the how, what the audience says. And I think it's the audience often coins the terms for a lot of them. Like uh, I think Courtney Freakin Miller was the audience saying that, mm. and I was just like, sure. But I feel like we should go back to you being cast yeah. because this was during the era of Defy where there were a lot of things going on that were completely out of my control. Ian and I were tasked to work on what felt like a million different things at once. I think that there was this common misconception that we had no hand in approving or deciding for anything to get done. And that's not the case, actually. So I was talking with you and you actually thought that it was all Defy's decision to cast you guys. Or at least like a like an 80-20. Yeah. Like mostly Defy, you and Ian got to like maybe approve of something, but mm. the overall decision to bring cast on was Defy's pitch. You know, during the era in which I was gone or even, even uh, the two years that I was still there, there were a lot of people that would say things in the comments like, what the f this new cast? Like, we just want the old Smosh. And while I was gone, people were like, oh, this was a de Defy decision. And you know, all these different ideas were floating around. But I don't think Ian and I ever have officially spoken about like what the actual thought process was. I don't think I, I don't think that you really even know. know. You guys have mentioned it of just like, oh yeah, we wanted to expand or something. Yeah. But I never knew if that was something you were saying to be nice. <laughs> like truly, I you, was just you like, are oh. a wanted child. Okay, <laughs> we might have accidentally had you, but you're wanted. We definitely wanted we to definitely have you. We definitely wanted to have you. Trust us. Yes, we didn't deliberate for hours if we wanted you or not. Right, right. But you know, going into that process of hiring new cast, Ian and I were fully on board and you know, we had all these different requirements and things that we were looking for from people that we were gonna hire on as cast. But I, I think that some fears started popping up in my head around that time. The biggest issue for me was once we found this, you know, initial core group of five extra cast members, there was this idea that Defy had that completely conflicted with what Ian and I were feeling. And that's that you guys should be slowly integrated in, introduced slowly, you know, we warm people up to you. But then Defy was like, cool, now they're gonna be in everything. And that's where things started to kind of, I feel like there was a little bit of tension with the way that Defy wanted this cast to be incorporated versus the way that Ian and I felt like you should be incorporated to get the audience on board. And I think it was because the way that Defy hired you all on was for your contract full time. Yeah. So it was like, make them work, get them in everything. I mean, I, I totally get that. Cause it was, it, it is, a, it was a stupid contract at the time. Yeah. It was, a, it was a weird thing to just be like, yeah, you're there for four years, full time, all in. Five days a week, you're uh, at this office. Cause I totally understand your thought process of like, yeah, slowly introduce. Cause you make mm -hmm. a huge change to a YouTube channel, especially casting. Yeah. I mean, and we learned that cause we were at the front of it. We were thrown right out there and then we just had fans telling us, you know, who are you guys? What are you doing here? You're ruining small. Yeah, what was that like on your end? I will say, I think it didn't affect me too much because I'd already been through it. Because when I went on Disney Channel years before, So Random was actually the third season of Sunny with a Chance with Demi Lovato. So third season, they they change it and they add me, Damien, uh, Matthew Scott, and they bring us on for the full season. And we're just in every episode. And I remember hearing like, who are these people? These people suck. And I, what we heard a lot was, where's Demi? <laughs> where's Demi? Where's Demi? And it became a joke for us. So that's why when I joined this, I was like, well, I know what it's like to hop on a thing where people don't want you, not because they don't like you, but because they like their thing and yeah. people don't like change. But it was funny. And I, I, I thought it was kind of funny at the time. And I was like, yeah, of course, they're saying this. And then when you left and we started getting Where's Anthony, I was like, there's no way this is happening again. This is crazy. Uh, so I think that's why I was so quick to make a joke about that. Right. Because I was like, ah, just, this is already, this is, this is the second time in my career that I've been in this specific situation where a lead leaves and everyone's going, where are they? And what, the who, who are you? Yeah. And I'm just like, hey man, I'm just here. Like, I'm just trying to be funny. I didn't take offense to it because I, I knew that I was I was just there to, to do my job. I was yeah. just there to try to be funny. 
on camera uh, to do my best. And even though at the time I wasn't certain if you guys did really want us there, and you guys were, were kind to us. You guys, you weren't mean to us. So I, it wasn't that I felt you didn't want us there, but I didn't know where it was coming from. Cause yeah. I think we all knew there was a little bit of a feud going on between <laughs> you guys and Defy, uh -huh. and but we weren't certain what really it was about. Mm -hmm. And there's pieces of it that I didn't know until this year necessarily, like as I'm learning right now. So I I, I took on the, the mindset of just, I'll just keep going. Just might as well just keep going. I have a job. I'm so right. grateful to have a job. That's, I remember not really caring too much. It's funny, I dealt with a similar thing after coming back on. Yeah. I wasn't expecting it. Because it's yeah. now it's a whole new audience. Now the new audience, or at least, you know, there's a there's a small portion of the new audience that is very vocal where they're like, well, the, everything's gonna change. Everything that I like that's been established for Ooh. the past however many years is different now yeah. because Anthony's coming back on and owning this with Ian. And then I dealt with that a little bit. You know, yeah. I, I kind of had to lean away from those comments that were really negative because if you get too attached to it, then it's like a self-fulfilling prophecy where you get too worried that right. they hate you. So then you pull away and then they- You can't feed into it because for every negative comment, there is there is a hundred positive comments. Yeah, That's always been the case. Mm -hmm. but that negative comment really can stick out. They don't affect me really anymore. Um, and our fan base, I would say overall is extremely positive, but it was fascinating to see the people that had started watching in the previous six years suddenly see, oh, maybe it's gonna change and go back to what it was. But obviously what's really happened is we're getting truly, I think a best of both worlds. Yeah. Where it's just all of it. I won't lie to you i was scared at first when when, when you first walked in <laughs> um and i remember i remember you you talking to me later that day being like yeah your face your reaction and i was like i don't know what my reaction was because i think i was at first just like what's happening yeah. and then i remember going oh shit like uh, what what are they gonna do mm -hmm. uh i didn't i didn't know and the thing also was we had been on a uh, a break for for a couple weeks before uh, coming back. Mm -hmm. And before we went on that break, Ian made an announcement like, hey, let's do this, which was a show that we'd been doing on the main channel. He's like, we're gonna halt production on it. And at the time, we were really uncertain about the future of Smosh. Mm -hmm. And we were like, is this thing gonna last? We didn't know. I don't, I didn't know. You had your doubts about the entire I company. Had, I had my doubts about the entire thing a little bit. And that's, that's not the first time. <laughs> And it, uh, one time I was right because it actually did go under and we, we didn't have a job for a few months. But um, so I was like, okay, maybe this is the end. This series is sponsored by BetterHelp. Do you ever feel like your brain is getting in its own way? Like you know what you should do or what's good for you, but you just can't seem to do it. Therapy helps you figure out what's holding you back so you can work for yourself instead of against yourself. As I'm sure many of you know by now, I've been a huge advocate of therapy since I started going about six years ago. It's helped me in almost every facet of my life. So whether you're dealing with anxiety or depression or just the day-to-day -day struggles of being human, therapy has been a guiding light for me. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Make your brain your friend with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash Padilla today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash Padilla. This holiday season, you might be looking for nutritious, flavorful meals, even on days when it seems like you're too busy to cook. Factor is America's number one ready to eat meal delivery service, and it can help you eat well for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. It's chef prepared, dietitian approved, and delivered straight to your door. You'll save time, eat healthy, and be able to tackle all your holiday to-dos. Traditional meal prepping means grocery shopping, chopping, prepping, and cleaning. It takes a lot of time, and if you're not much of a cook, it may not even be that good. Factor's fresh, never frozen meals are delicious and ready to eat in just two minutes. Plus you can choose from over 35 meals every week that support calorie smart, vegan, veggie, and protein plus diets. Head to factormeals.com slash Padilla50 and use code Padilla50 to get 50% off. That's code Padilla50 at factormeals.com slash Padilla50 to get 50% off. Now, Back to Shane Top. And uh, then Ian texted me in the days leading up to coming back to the office. And he was like, hey, can you meet me at my house to talk about some stuff? And I was like, man, I'm on vacation. And I, I, and I think in my head, I was like, I don't wanna know that 
we're not gonna have a job. You don't want to learn the. Bad I don't want to know. I don't want to know. And I was like, I can't, man. I, 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 no. Were you really convinced it was negative news? I, I was convinced it was negative news. I wasn't yeah. sure what. I thought maybe we're gonna halt the main channel because Smosh, the uh, Pit and Games had been doing okay, but the main channel was really struggling. We loved the shows we were doing, but it was it was a lot of money and work, and the return was not equal to that. Mm -hmm. And we were like, what it. And it was also, for the past six years, it was hard to establish a voice. After you left, it was like, what is this channel? It, it kind of became the Every Blank Ever channel for a long time. Yeah. Then that saw, started to dip in views, and we were like, all right, like, what do we do? And, and so we had a year of trying to do something, but it was, it was tough. And so I was certain a bad change was happening. Then you walked in the building, and I, at first, it is like a happy moment. We're all happy. But then after a minute, I'm like, oh, like, what, you know, what what do Ian and Anthony think about? Yeah, when, when I walked us? in, everyone clapped with excitement. Clapped. And then yeah. it very quickly, as we started talking, everyone was like, but what? What about our jobs? Yeah, am I still going to work here? Yeah, because I don't know. I didn't know how I felt. I didn't feel certain about anything. Yeah. I wasn't like, oh, we're screwed. I was just like, I don't know what this means. And... Um, I, I would say within a week or two, I was like, this is actually the best thing. And you very quickly uh, showed us that you really cared about the work we'd been doing and that you really wanted to build on it and build on the cast that we had established. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know a lot of fans were upset that shows like Let's Do This and, and The Funeral and whatever were being taken off the main channel. But I think that was a change that was probably coming anyways yeah. because People didn't see the behind the scenes of just how tough it was. But as people I think know by now, you also did care about those projects because we're now making the funeral thing bigger. Yes. And we're doing it as a live show. I think and it comes out today. I think, today. I think the live show is tonight. I think it's today. So and and that's So was, quick plug, buy your tickets if you haven't already, because they're roasting me. I gotta say it's brave of you to invite me into your home <laughs> uh, to do this show while I am actively working on writing roasts. I'm uh, giving you more you. material right now. I, sure. You are absolutely, I mean, this is this is gold for Good. me. Yeah. Uh, so I'll tell you all my deepest, most intimate, vulnerable yes. pieces of me yeah. for you to use as ammunition mm -hmm. tonight. Yeah, very brave. I think the fact that this this live show, you guys started we started planning this quickly after you'd come back. Yeah. And so people thought, oh, he maybe, I, I, I'm not seeing no, many I, of the comments. Seen, I've seen some comments. Where they're though. like, oh, they just didn't care about these shows. It's like, no, you actually cared so much they're that no. you want to make it bigger than it was before. <laughs> yeah, uh, there are people who are like, Anthony came in and axed everything with no, all the other no. cast on the new channel and wanted it to be his again. No, it's just not the case. And, and frankly, at first I was like, oh man, I'm not going to be in a lot of these sketches. But then it took one more second of thought to go, I am in so much stuff right now that that's actually the best thing for me because I was having more fun and feeling more fulfilled on Pit and Games where I was really far more part of the process from start to finish. Give you the opportunity to focus more of your energy and be more creative with Pit and Games. And the podcast. And the podcast. So I, I have plenty to do yeah. and I, I'm feeling incredibly fulfilled. And do you know how many happy. episodes you're in? A month? So it's like over twenty, I think. So I I had to start actively um, telling them like, hey, I need a I need a break in our shoot weeks. Yeah. Because we would film uh, almost all of our content for a month in a week. Well, it was every three weeks. Every you were three shooting weeks for we'd five film days. For five days, and it hit a point earlier this year where I did thirty videos in a week, and <laughs> and our videos Christ. aren't just like chill videos. Yeah. Um, we're not doing ASMR. You know, this is this is an hour of us yelling, screaming, making each other laugh, getting slapped, eating getting disgusting slapped, food, yeah, doing hide and seek, um, or even reading Reddit for an hour is exhausting. Yes. Uh, so that was that was over thirty hours of that in a week, and I I don't think it I realized how exhausted I was, and I it just kind of was becoming a blur, and um, the main channel stuff was really hard because mm -hmm. it's a lot of character work, and it's a lot, lot of effort. prep, it's a ton of prep. And so as soon as this change happened, I, I was like, oh, wow, I, I can focus a little bit more. And even still, it was probably too much work. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's it's a ton. It's, it's really hard. It's fun. I hate 
taking myself out of a video. Yeah. I hate saying no. I mean, as we're filming this, they're filming smart they're stuff. They're filling other stuff and, without you and, right now. Because this is my day where I, I, I'm not in stuff, but I still, I'll see the call sheet and I'll see the videos they're filming. And I'm like, oh man, they're filming a Try Not To Laugh. I, <laughs> I, no, I shouldn't, I shouldn't, I can't. I, I need to take a break. Yeah, everyone is just absolutely crushing it. Obviously, you know, you talked about how you are, but you were telling me that you still have imposter syndrome sometimes. Yeah, I still struggle with, with being like, I'm a YouTuber. Mm -hmm. Every time we go to VidCon, I, 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 I just view myself as not being up there with anyone else. Uh, and I, I, I fight that, that's my own head. Is it because you were like, hired on as, as talent that you're like, I'm just talent? I, I, I don't know if there's a reason. I think it's just mm. my head being stupid. I think it's just my, you know, my uh, self-doubt and, and just my perfectionism. Like I don't I, deserve like it. Like I'm, there's always, I always should be doing something more and- um, That's probably why you're in 30 hours of shoots in a week. Yeah, probably. <laughs> I mean, truly, I think I, 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 I fear giving myself a break because I don't feel like I deserve it sometimes. Mm -hmm. And so I, uh, I have to really fight against that mentally. I think it's been helpful. I think Smosh has done wonders for me, despite how tough it is at times. I think it's done wonders for my confidence because I, I don't think I ever fully embraced who I was as a person, but also as an entertainer until I was at Smosh. I think the nature of it, uh, the grind of it in some ways kind of forced me to I had to kind of shed the insecurities because you have no choice but to keep going. Mm. There was no moment for me to to run away from my fears. I was like, I have to, I have to, I have to just go. Was I there ever go. a time that you thought you needed to jump off the ship? Uh, there were times where I quite, I was like, am I stupid for staying? Um, because I, I, I have over the years, I've had people tell me like, you should go do your own thing. You know, and, I, and I, I looked at what you had done and I was like, man, is that the right move? But I think what's held me back was that I, I think going in, even if it would be more successful, doing it by myself just does not sound um, appealing. Mm. I, I love working with the people that I, I work with and I, I do a lot of it for the viewers, but when I'm in the room and I'm, I'm being a psycho on camera, oftentimes I'm just trying to make the crew laugh and I'm trying mm. to make everyone in the room laugh and I, I am really genuinely just having a good time with my friends. It's such a privilege to get to continue to work with them mm. and to, to really have a tough job, but it's such a fun, silly job that I will never find this again. I know that for certain. And I've worked on TV shows. I've worked on movies. The, it's just not the same as this. This is so fun. Mm. Uh, this is, it, it's, it really is a like a, a I don't know how to describe it. It's 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 a it feels fictional. I, I I'm so glad I'm in this sphere now, and I I got very lucky with how I got into it. I'm pretty certain if I didn't get that audition, I would not be entertaining. If all of it went away, and I lived in Nebraska, and I was a farmer, mm -hmm. I think I would still have a TikTok and I would make stupid videos with your sheep i'd find a way i'd find a way to <laughs> to be stupid somewhere i my stupidity is going to exist online <laughs> in some capacity for the rest of my life i will find a way well i i've said this in bits and pieces before but i just want to say flat out that i really really respect everything that you've done everything that you've contributed how much you've um you know been there with smosh through so many ups and downs how you've had so much faith in this brand and how you've pushed it to continue to be what it has always been at the heart, which like you mentioned a second ago, which has really been about that friendship and that connection that you feel with the people that you're making this stuff with. You know, the way that Ian and I started it was we just love to make each other laugh. Let's capture that genuine friendship that we have together. Let's see if this connects with anyone. Let's see if it resonates with people and it did and you've kept that magic alive through all these years and I know it's been I know it's been hard and I know there's been many times where it's felt like it might all come crashing down and all these decisions that are completely out of your control you've just kind of had to roll with the punches and you've been there with it through it all thanks man that means, <laughs> that means a lot it really does mean a lot coming from you uh it's it's and I I have so much respect for you um and uh, it's it's really cool for you to be to be back. And uh, it's 
it's cool to be back in a capacity where I, I feel, um, you know, it does feel different, mm -hmm. you know, and um, I, I do have more confidence in myself. But yeah, that, that means a lot for you to say that because, you know. And I'm giving a very Ian response <laughs> right now. I don't know what to say. I'm just like, oh, I get it. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> I get it. So we do big meetings where we get the whole team together and uh, you and Ian stand at the top. And so this is Ian doing that. Um, okay. Um, uh, yeah. So um, sticking out your gut um, uh, for, for the Rizzler. Um, uh, you're so skibbity. Um, you're so <clears throat> phantom facts. Uh, just want to be your Sigma. Uh, freaking come here. Give me your Ohio. Uh, <clears throat> uh let's do this. <laughs> <laughs> it's the constant, like holding in the burp. Uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to check out the new episode of our brand new show, Assumptions, that we just launched. The newest episode covers asexuals. And what's coming up next? That's right, furries. You fucking love furries. You love furries. All of y'all love furries so much. And we love that you love furries. But are furries forcing their sexual kinks out into the universe on everyone? Do they want kitty litter in all of our school's classrooms? Find out in the Furries Assumption episode coming soon.